It's not very often that on my channel that I give you guys a reality check on what's been going on in my day-to-day -day life. Well, trying to look for a job, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. And when opportunities come along, I've got to try and grab them with both hands. Such an opportunity came up for me earlier this week. But what happened? Due to high numbers, I wasn't able to be part of that opportunity. The one shot that I had to finally catch a break after everything that I've been through, the one shot I had to finally get myself out there. And all this does is knock my confidence even further. I've been through, there's no other way of putting it. I've been through hell for the last little while. And I don't even know how long that was. Losing my coach, the start of my mental health issues. Stress and anxiety from looking after my grandparents. To the point where I actually cut off all social interactivity just to make sure that they were okay every night. I gave up sleep. I gave up eating. I gave up a lot just to make sure they were okay every day. I'm somebody that's never put myself before anybody else my entire life. And I'm standing by that to this day. And yet, it's like the world wants me to suffer. It wants me to be like this my entire life. Because that's what the last few months for me have been like. A very messy breakup, which I went into great detail about on my channel. And that was just the start of a chain of events over the last few months. My mental health got worse. I've had flashbacks and nightmares regarding the Manchester Arena attacks. Last week, the flashbacks didn't stop for the best part of an hour. I had to walk out of a I had to walk out of a CrossFit class at my local CrossFit gym because of how badly shaken up the flashbacks had me. And I wasn't back in that gym until Friday, the day before national championships. And I managed to get an indoor personal best of 4 meters 92 in the long jump. And I thought, great, finally a break. Nope, the world wants me to suffer once again. One of my closest friends has a lot of health issues to deal with right now, health issues that they've had their entire life. I'm not going to go into detail regarding that because that's just, some of it's just none of my business, but I'm always going to be there for them regardless, just like they've always been there for me. And at the end of the day, what else has happened to me? I lose my grand days, and I mean days, four days before Christmas. So both my grandparents are gone now. Months, just a couple of months after um, my granddad passed away back in 2016, I was made homeless the day before my birthday. And then of course, the following year, the Manchester Arena attacks.
like I said, the f and the fact that I'm still having nightmares and flashbacks about it shows that it still affects me to this day. And it's been nearly two years since that night. I'm never going to forget the state of fear that the entire city, and the entire UK for that matter, because people came from all over the UK, people as far up as the Auckland and Shet Shetland Islands, people as far up as there came to Manchester to see Ariana Grande perform. The fact that somebody, after I had one of my, one of my flashbacks, the fact that somebody had the audacity to call me out for being an attention seeker after people lost their lives. You don't think, you think I'm not affected by this? Just because I didn't lose anybody in that night doesn't mean I'm not affected by it. It's not the healthiest, it's not the healthiest, blah, can't get my words out. It's not the healthiest thing in the world for me to be doing, but I've had to suppress my anger. I've had to suppress my anger. And I've heard people telling me, oh, just try and be positive about it, but be positive, positive, blah. damn it. Just try and be positive about everything. How can you be positive about everything? How am I supposed to... How am I supposed to show how I'm really feeling if I have to suppress how I actually feel? I was bullied for 13 years at school just because I was different from everybody else. And the fact that people like me still get ignored, still get overlooked, and still get bullied. It just shows how disgusting people can be. I am sick and tired of people like me being overlooked. Being bullied. And being neglected. All I've wanted for nearly 26 years of my existence is just to be accepted as a normal human being. Is that too much to ask for? And regarding recent events, for once, can the world just give me a break? Is that too much to ask for? Is it too much to ask for a break in my life for once? Have I not suffered enough? Have I not suffered enough after everything I've been through my entire life? What more do you want me to suffer with? And when I'm doing when I'm doing these videos, I try and be as optimistic as I can. I try and portray this character that's always so upbeat and so positive. But it's when reality checks come into play that I have to forget about playing that character altogether. And I have to focus on the real issues at hand. The real issues that affect my day-to-day -day life that I have to leave at the door when I'm doing my YouTube videos. One year ago today, I had to restart my channel. Because someone apparently already had a trademark on the name of my channel at the time. And because of what happened with Logan Paul in in that Japanese forest because of the comments he made during that video
his actions punished people like us for something we didn't do. He should be the one that's punished, not people like me. I really hope I get that break that gives me the opportunity to look back on everything and everyone that has ever put me down and just laugh in their face about it. WHO'S LAUGHING NOW?! will be my exact response on that day. Who's laughing now? Because if any, because it, because those who know me very well, if they think for even a minute that somebody is going to come along and try and put me down, you can put me down, but you can't keep me down. And also with the technical issues that I have right now, I have to I have to make use with my old laptop right now. A laptop that I used to do my YouTube work on before I got before I managed to get a new system. I'm gonna have to get a new laptop soon. But at the end of the day, one year since I got this channel back up and running. Since I started doing my YouTube work again. I've had times where I've just thought, what's the point in continuing? I just can't catch a break right now. Seven years of hell after I left school. And like I said, to everyone that's tried to put me down over the years, and to everyone that's still doing it to this day, the day I get that big break is the day I'm going to laugh in every single one of your faces and say, who's laughing now? Because as John Cena's shirt says, never give up. I often question to myself, how do I manage to keep going after everything I've been through? How do I keep going after everything that's happened to me? How do I keep going? Even when I've been through a terrorist attack and two family bereavements. All in the space of just three years. How do I manage to keep going? And the truth to that is, I don't know. I don't know how I keep my gift self. I don't know how I keep myself going. Whatever I'm doing, I must be doing something, right? Because I'm still here. But anyway. Enough about that. Enough about uh, the life of hell that I've gone through. It's time to get into your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news and rumours. And of course, those points and trophies on this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast.
If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. You know, when... You have those moments, like you've just seen, where you just have to get everything off your chest. Part of you does feel a lot better afterwards. Regardless of how temporary that feeling may be. But in any case, hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Retchell here. Welcome to this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. I'm recording this on the Friday... Because I, because like I said, like I said in my rant at the beginning, that I've had technical issues, um, so apologies to uh, my patrons for, um, apologies to my patrons for not being able to get this out on um, the Thursday. I'm recording this on the Friday, but nevertheless, here we go. Uh, we have got a lot of news. We have got a lot of news to get through over the course of. Uh, today and my goodness me it is my goodness me it has been a very newsworthy week in particular with one um particular gaming publisher who is known as gaming satan but nevertheless We'll get into that shortly. We've also got news on uh, Spider-Man once again. Insomniac possibly teasing that a sequel is already on the way. And with regards to Resident Evil, there's a Netflix series on the way as well. Uh, we have also got news on Epic Games officially declaring war on Steam. And in the battle of the free games, it's Xbox versus PlayStation 4. February 2019 and this month is the last month we are going to have games for PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita and in the points and trophies section at the end of the show last week we saw the Resident Evil 2 remake come out and in honor of that it has reached 3 million copies sold worldwide I'm going to be going through the trophy list for the Resident Evil 2 remake. All this and much more coming up on this week's edition of the podcast. But before all that, as usual, as always, a big shout out to Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as $3.99 a month. Sign up today and get a 21 day free trial and you get three free game rentals. There are no late fees. And you can keep the game as long as you like or keep it forever at a discounted price on the online store. Now, I had a couple of um and I had a couple of rentals come through for me recently. Uh, and I've I'm saying I've still got Spider-Man. Don't don't worry, you Spider-Man maniacs. I'll be getting back into new game plus mode on Spider-Man next week. And not just that, uh, I've also got... Ah, here we are. Shenmue 1 and 2 Remastered. Finally get Shenmue 3 coming out later this year. And because I had enough points in my account, I thought, you know what? Let's go for a bonus game. Big shout out to the uh, PlayStation Access team. Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. Now Rob Pearson says it's a very easy game to platinum. So, you know what? I'm going to go for it. You can play the latest games for as little as $9.99 a month. So, you could play the Resident Evil 2 remake. Heck, you could even play Kingdom Hearts 3. Speaking of which, and 
if you stay tuned in the build up to my the start of my playthrough for Kingdom Hearts 3 got a yo-yo here a Kingdom Hearts 3 yo-yo and that's gonna be a giveaway prize so here we go once you start renting you're gonna start saving I've been using the service for nearly two years now and it's one of the best decisions I've ever made boomerangrentals.co.uk the best place to rent your games this is for my UK fan base only So here we go, this is the big news of the day, or of the week, even. So, let's get started. EA finally buckles in Belgium and stops selling FIFA points following the loot box gambling pressure. EA has announced plans to stop selling FIFA points in Belgium following government pressure over loot boxes. In FIFA Ultimate Team, you can spend real-world money on FIFA points, which can then be used to buy card packs. In September 2018, the Belgian government, which had declared loot boxes to be a form of gambling because players don't know exactly which items a box may contain when buying one, launched a criminal investigation into EA after the publisher refused to modifies, modify FIFA's randomized card pack loot boxes in order to comply with the country's gambling laws. Belgium's, gambling, Belgium's Gaming Commission determined loot boxes found in FIFA 18, Overwatch, Counter-Strike and Counter-Strike Global Offensive, not to mention Star Wars Battlefront 2 and FIFA 19, were an illegal game of chance and thus subject to Belgian gambling laws. Following, following the ruling, Blizzard, Valve and 2K Games are elected to disable loot boxes in their games in Belgium. EA, however, had done nothing until now. After further discussions with the Belgian authorities, we have decided to stop offering FIFA points for sale in Belgium. More like you were forced to stop offering FIFA points in Belgium. This change will come into effect by January 31st, which was yesterday, which means from then players in Belgium will not be able to buy points to buy FUT packs. They'll still be able to play Ultimate Team and use their existing players, and they'll still be able to obtain foot packs through foot coins, the virtual currency you earn through playing the game. But they will no longer be able to pay to get ahead. Yeah, small thing regarding getting the coins. Um, an issue with that is that you can't exactly use the coins to get some of the higher price packs like the 15k packs 100k packs the problem there is that the problem there is that um You would have to play a lot of games on Ultimate Team just to get the coins you need to unlock to buy the packs. And it's only about, at most, five, six hundred coins a game. That is a major grind. So. Last year, EA came out strongly in saying that it didn't believe loot boxes were a form of gambling. <sighs> That's typical EA for you. In April, it said its games were developed and implemented ethically and lawfully around the world. Nope! Belgium says otherwise. And it did not agree its games could be considered as any form of gambling. Um... Do they even listen? Do they even listen to anybody these days, apart from themselves? 
This EA CEO, Andrew Wilson, said in May was because players always receive a specified number of items in each pack. And because it doesn't provide or authorize any way to cash out or sell items or virtual currency for real money. However, as your game has reported, when it comes to FIFA, you can most definitely cash out. In, for FIFA 19, EA added FUT card pack probabilities for the first time. This system tells you the percentage chance you have of obtaining a card of a certain quality from a pack. From, for some cards, the percentage chance is shockingly low. This was seen as an attempt to add transparency to Ultimate Team, which makes a billion dollars a year for EA. Good luck making that without the loot boxes! I mean, I've got a screenshot here. Premium Electrum Players Pack. This is just an example. Minimum probability of getting one or more players of the overall range or described category in this pack. A gold player of, 70, of rated 75 and above, 100%. A gold rated player of 82 and over, 41%. A gold player rated 85 and above, 4.3%. And this is the real kicker. Ones to watch player, less than 1%. In its statement issued today, EA restated its belief that loot boxes are not a form of gambling. Belgium isn't FIFA's biggest market, of course, and EA insists the change will not impact its financial performance. Yeah, about that, you've got the US government, in particular those in Hawaii especially, they are going to be... They have launched an investigation into, into this. Um, what else? It's no surprise that you're going to have the entire world starting to cave in. Well, you're going to have the entire world start to cause you to cave in. You're going to need to find other ways of making, um, actually scratch making money, stealing money from us, because that's all they do. But you can tell from the wording EA isn't happy about the situation. No, we re really now. You're not happy that you have to abide by the law. Accept it and own up to your mistakes, you electronic cowards. We seek to bring choice. Nope. Fairness. Nope. Value. Nope. And fun. Absolutely no to our players in all of our games. No, 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 no. That's my best emit that's my best imitation of the uh the uh the no 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 cat in addition to providing players options in how they play we include pack we include pack probabilities in our games for the transparency players want to make informed content choices. While we are taking this action, we do not agree with Belgian authorities' interpretation of the law, and we continue to seek more clarity on the matter as we go forward. The impact of this change to FIFA Ultimate Team in Belgium is not material to our financial performance. They said the exact same thing 
when they were forced to get rid of the loot boxes, temporarily, when Star Wars Battlefront 2 came out. So, yeah, EA, shut up, admit your mistakes, and never use loot boxes ever again! Instead of using the money to... Instead of using the money... Instead of using the money to pay yourselves, use it to pay your staff, pay their overtime, and make real games! $20 skins in Anthem? You've already sent Anthem to the slaughter! At this point, we may as well kiss goodbye to Bioware, and I'm never playing an EA game again! I refuse to buy EA games! I refuse to buy them! Because all EA are interested in is every single person's money that's all they're interested in hello i like money mr Krabs sums it up perfectly in a nutshell ea used to be great with their games but now they only want the money. Nothing but money. They'd rather have the quantity of money over the quality of their games. Yes, I get angry every time I report on something regarding EA. To the point where... To the point where I'm not surprised anymore. I am honestly not surprised. And like I said... EA is gaming Satan. If you ever want to work with EA, avoid it like the plague, because it's pretty much a death wish. Next piece of news, Dr. Mario is getting a game for iOS and Android. Nintendo just announced a new mobile game partnership with Japanese company Line, which will involve a new Dr. Mario game coming to iOS and Android. It'll be called Dr. Mario World and is being co-developed by both companies with further assistance coming from NHN Entertainment. It'll be out worldwide in early summer 2019. The game is described by Nintendo as a puzzle title, of course. While they, while they also say it'll be free to download with optional in-app purchases. This is how you make money from games, EA. You, I'm sorry. Loot boxes in a $60 AAA game. No. You make enough money from the sales of the games themselves. 
You do not need microtransactions in these sort of games. If a game is free to play, then yes, the microtransactions are justified. But not in a game like FIFA. The announcement comes just after Nintendo also announced a delay for the Mario Kart phone game, which is also scheduled to appear in the summer. Now that is going to be interesting. Look forward to playing them. Next article, <clears throat> Ubisoft sends out political email for the Division 2, a game that is definitely not political. Oh, the irony in this headline. Ubisoft would like you to know that the Division 2, a game with a deeply political setting, is not a political statement. Yeah, we'll believe that when the game actually comes out. Which is weird because earlier today, earlier publisher sent out a political email about it. Two emails in total were sent to fans of the game. The first was advertising the upcoming private beta. And while the content of the email was just regular hype circle stuff, hype cycle stuff, the subject line read, come see what a real government shutdown looks like in the private beta. Not a great choice of words. It's not that. It's not that funny even in isolation. But considering how many hundreds of thousands of hundreds of thousands of Americans and their families suffered through the shutdown, it was also in pretty poor taste. Just before I continue with that article, Ubisoft, you may have just uh, affected the sales of your game because you've gone done fucked it up. So a follow-up email was sent a few hours later, which read, "Hello." A marketing email promoting Tom Clancy: The Division Two was sent in error today. No, it was sent in poor taste. You did not think of the consequences of this. This was a grave breakdown in process and we apologize for this error. And the offensive subject line of the email. We recognize the very real impact of the United States government shut down on thousands of people and did not intend to make light of the situation. Nope. Don't believe it for a second. The three worst, actually four, scratch that, four worst gaming publishers in the business right now. EA, Activision, Ubisoft, Konami. In that order. In that order. It's a very, it is very triple A video. Somebody proofread these articles. It is, it is very AAA video games that a game with such a bizarre aversion to, to owning its own politics ends up getting political via a grave breakdown in process. Like I said, Ubisoft just... Ubisoft messed up. Ubisoft messed up. So anyway... Now this is gonna, now this is a, this is interesting. Detroit Become Human Studio is abandoning PlayStation exclusivity. This is interesting. Does that mean that Detroit Become Human and Heavy Rain are gonna be coming to other 
platforms later down the road? Well, well, there's only one way to find out. This thing decides to thank you. Here we go. There we go. That's what we want. Right. We could very well be playing the next game from Detroit Become Human developer Quantic Dream on Xbox One or Nintendo Switch. Quantic Dream recently announced that NetEase, the Chinese internet technology company known for publishing and developing mobile titles, has acquired a minority stake in the company and allowing it to publish multi-platform titles in the future. Now, this is interesting. All right. Uh, the landscape of the gaming industry will go through major evolutions in the coming years. With new hardware to come, new business models to explore, and new ways of playing to invent, Quantic Dream co-CEO and creative director David Cage said in a press release. We want Quantic Dream to take a key role in this exciting future and having NetEase by our side as a strategic partner will allow us to expand our creative vision and develop the company to its fullest potential. NetEase understands what Quantic is about as they share our passion for high quality games and our ambitions for the studio. When asked about developing for mobile platforms, Quantic Dream's other co-CEO, Guillaume Del Fondoimiere, apologies if I butchered the pronunciation of that, uh, told Variety via IGN that the studio's objective is to be present on all platforms where this where there is an audience that can enjoy our experience. We will, of course, continue developing on PlayStation, a platform that we know very well after having worked with Sony for 12 years, but we also, but we will also be present on all other relevant platforms. Now, this is interesting. Quantic Dream posted a video on Twitter starring Chloe, one of the androids from Detroit Become Human, to announce the partnership, and it's appropriately dystopian. Hmm. Now, I'm only going to play the audio from... Now, I'm only I'm only going to play the audio from the uh, the video just for the just for the sake of copyright. See, I mean, yes, I mean, yes, I abide by the rules. Something EA should do. Anyway, here we go. Hello, my name is Chloe. I'm an android developed by the video game studio Quantic Dream, the creators of Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and Detroit Become Human. We want to share some very important news with you. Quantic Dream is proud to announce its partnership with one of the largest video game developers and publishers in the world, NetEase. This strategic alliance will allow Quantic Dream to continue to develop its vision, experiment with new ideas, and explore new horizons while remaining an independent studio. To all those who have loved and enjoyed the work of Quantic Dream these past 20 years, we will continue with the same passion and ambition to tell stories that move you, create characters that resonate with you, and craft experiences that speak about our world, about our emotions, about us. You've believed in us for all these years. Without you, none of this would have been possible. This is the start of a new story for Quantic Dream, full of hope, dreams, and passion. And just like all of our stories, it can only be written with you. There are many other exciting things going on, but that's all I'm allowed to reveal for now. On behalf of Quantic Dream and NetEase, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And remember, stay deviant. Ooh. Ooh. Goody, that I like. Stay deviant, eh? Yeah. Interesting. I like that.
Well played, guys. Well played. An interesting thing regarding Chloe. She's the android that's on the main menu screen for Detroit Become Human. Detroit Become Human I had in my top 10 games of 2018. I mean, it was as high up as number two or number three. And it's interesting that I say because because of the games that came out since then, it knocks it a few places down the list. But anyway, to finish off the article, <clears throat> if NetEase acquiring a minority stake in a major developer sounds familiar, that's because it did just the same thing with Bungie back in June 2018. This eventually led to Bungie being able to not only split from Activision Blizzard, but also retain the publishing rights to Destiny. Ha! Eat that, Activision! Suckers. Go and make the next Call of Duty game just the same as it always is. Our next article of the day, GameStop no longer selling its company. Interesting, let's have a look at what it says. In an official announcement made by the GameStop board of directors, they announced that it has terminated efforts to sell the company. It's the beleaguered games retailer had been looking to find a buyer since last May, but today is that the announcement reveals these efforts were met without success. Investors have reacted quickly to the official statement, with the resulting drop in GameStop stock value hitting the company for almost half a billion dollars. Ouch! The company's stock value has seen a drastic plummet of up to 28% following the announcement, which represents a loss of about $430 million. This marks a 52-week low for the troubled retail which now finds its stocks resting at $11.24 as investors react to the official statement. A large factor in the decline of the company is the rise of digital media, with each year showing an increasing number of consumers who prefer to skip physical purchases altogether. A similar transition has heavily impacted the, the likes of newspaper, the newspaper industry, and that means things aren't looking good for GameStop though the dust hasn't settled on a dramatic stock drop yet. GameStop stated that the ces uh, cessation, how are you pronouncing that, of its buyout strategy, cessation, cessation of the bu its buyout strategy was due to the lack of available financing on terms that would be commercially acceptable by, uh, acceptable to a prospective acquirer. There, was, there were rumours that two firms were bidding to complete a buyout as soon as next month, but these deals evidently never came to fruition. Earlier this month, bearing in mind this article was written a few days ago in January, earlier this month the, the company concluded the sale of its spring mobile business, a process which generated $735 million for the company. More than half the value of this sale was just eaten up in stock losses today. Ouch. But the board promises that it's still looking to find an optimal use for the proceeds. The sale, which was a much need the sale was a much needed cash injection for GameStop, which recorded lower holiday sales in 2018 than it did in, in 2018 than it did the year prior. GameStop is currently without a permanent CEO, a factor which is likely fueling the rate of, at which investors are shying away from the embattled retailer. It'll be interesting to see if stock, if the stock recovers later on this week, but today will certainly go down as one of the worst days yet for the beleaguered business. 
Well, I think as far as their business practices are concerned, I think they've only got themselves to blame for that one. I think they've only got themselves to blame. Right. Anyway. Next bit, next article of the day. Um, top Smash Bros. commentator is no longer accepting feedback on her speaking voice. Hmm. Now that's interesting. That is interesting. Why that would be. So anyway, here we go. Victoria or Vicky Kitty, um, Victoria Perez, had been competing at Super Smash Bros. 4 five months when a local tournament organizer plucked her out of the contenders pool and threw her on stage to commentate oh man i would love to do that over the pa one over the pa one 2015 tournament in fort lauderdale florida everyone heard the words victoria come into the stream room it wasn't a question not that perez would give herself the option to say no i'm already talking about the game perez said matter of said matter of faculty Factly over the phone last week, just point a camera at me. Three years later, Perez is one of the biggest names in Smash commentary. If you've ever tuned into a pro Smash tournament, you've heard the breathless play-by-plays of who attacked whom, where the attacks get, got dodged, who came out, who came out on top, and how the results measured up to expectations. Chances are you've heard Perez's voice in the mix on her Twitter. She jokes, I'm the one who sounds like a little boy when I commentate your matches. Perez, who's 22, is on top of this world now, commentating national tournaments including Overwatch and ARMS, viewed by hundreds of thousands of people. Most notably, Smash publisher Nintendo invited Perez to commentate the 2018 Smash Ultimate Invitational at E3. First tournament of the much-hyped upcoming game at the time. For hours... Perez was perched on stage, breaking the brand new game, breaking down the brand new game, and seamlessly transitioning between descriptions of its most basic elements. When a fighter is knocked off stage, it's a KO, and the deep analysis of spatial control and tech. Two hundred thousand viewers tuned in at its peak. Perez is also just about to graduate college in Miami, Florida. Between studying for her communications degree and living the student life, Perez's part-time job has her traveling the world to sportscast Super Smash Bros. on live streams. When her face appears on camera, it's usually framed by long blonde hair, dyed neon colors at the ends, and an enormous pair of headphones. Her style of commentary is very informative based on her experience and preference of other players, says Josh Kendall, a Smash commentator with whom Perez formed the duo Biggie Smalls in 2015. The name is a joke about their height difference. Perez is five foot one and Kendall is six foot six. Very clever. She has also been textbook heavy when it comes to knowing about specific character traits like moves doing a certain percent, which also picks up, she also picks up common player habits. Amassing the huge amount of knowledge and background a commentator needs to be Authoritative is intensely time consuming. Perez estimates that she spends 9 to 14 hours each week studying the game, either on stream or offline. I'm a hands on learner, she said. Any character I play, that's how I learn their toolkit. I need to play against other characters to really understand them too. Commentators narrate the facts, but they are also but they are but they are also hype machines laying out the matches, stakes, and stoking the flames of fan enthusiasm. Guilty as charged, Your Honor! In addition to that, Perez says commentating plays an important role in the scene at large. Serving as a bridge, we are essentially selling a player. The first thing the audience will hear is the commentator. You have to be the bridge for the community to the audience. Perez says her role from a bird's eye industry viewpoint too. Even with sponsors, when they're picking up a Smash player, the first thing they'll hear is the commentators. The way a commentator talks about a player could be an influence for whether they're picked up by a sponsor. 
very interesting indeed. Goodness me, this is a long article. This is a long article. I'm not even going to go through all of it. But yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting indeed. What else is very interesting is the fact that Epic Games has now declared war on Steam as of this past Monday. Ooh, goody. Shots fired, the subheading. To challenge a platform synonymous with PC gaming, the Epic Store needs its own games. That's what I said last year. And I think it remains true. But for crying out loud, Epic, stealing Metro Exodus from Steam 18 days before launch? Maybe take a sip of water and finish what's on your plate. Like, say, adding cloud saves before going back to the buffet. What a coup. Ouch. I figured Epic would start 2019 slowly focused on playing feature catch up with Steam, adding libraries, sorting tools or community hubs, which it still lacks after revealing satisfactory Man to Journey, Hades, and others as exclusives last year. I didn't expect them to throw even more Fortnite V-Bucks at the problem of taking on Steam, at least not so soon, without adding, and without adding new features. But not even a full month into 2019, Epic did just that, and it's hitting so hard that Valve has actually responded for the first time. It's bizarre to see Valve on the defensive, the architect of modern PC game distribution makes declarations, not appeals. But this clearly stung. Not only did 4A Games and Deep Silver unexpectedly pull Metro Exodus from Steam, the platform both the platform both have succeeded on for years. They announced its defect this defection on the Steam store itself. Imagine if Metro had occupied shelf space at GameStop for six months, then announced at the last minute, visibly, on that same shelf you could only buy the game at Target. Yikes! Notice, later today, sales of Metro Exodus will be discontinued on Steam due to a publisher decision to make the game exclusive to another PC store. The developer and publisher have assured us that all prior sales of the game on Steam will be fulfilled on Steam and Steam owners will be able to access the game and any future updates or DLC through Steam. We think the decision to remove the game is unfair to Steam customers, especially after a long pre-sale period. We apologize to Steam customers that were expecting it to be available for, for sale through the February 15th release date, but we, are, we were only recently informed of the decision and given limited time to let everyone know. Ouch! That is definitely gonna sting. That is definitely gonna sting. Valve rarely responds to insults. I know, because I insult Valve all, Valve all the time and they never want to talk to me. <laughs> but for once, it's licking its wounds publicly. Ouch. We think that this is, we think that this is yada 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 yada, blah 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 blah. Well, the next paragraph was just basically what I read out. War. It isn't fair. And war never changes. Or does it? And as of today, Epic has properly declared Valve's response is pouty in comparison, a reflection of how secure Valve's walls have been until this point. It lost EA to Origin, Call of Duty to Battle.net, and now Bethesda has its own platform. Ugh. This is not looking good for Steam. I think the only way they're going to be able to get themselves back on their feet is RELEASING HALF-LIFE 3 ALREADY, DAMN IT! Which won't be any time soon anyway, but my point still stands, RELEASE HALF-LIFE 3! 
You already got enough money. Use it to employ your staff to make Half-Life 3. But publishers defecting to first party launches was emigration. Losses, minor rivals, but not an assault on its heartland. Epic is different. It's taking big third party games, including Division 2. It's putting holes in the fortress where GOG and itch.io have only grazed it with anti DRM disclosure. Discourse. Worse, Metro is cheaper on the Epic Store than on Steam. At least in the US. Brutal. Metro is front and center on the Epic Store, naturally. No one has ever done this. Ouch! That is brutal! In part by being the biggest, Valve has bagged a lot of customer loyalty. But developer and publisher loyalty is, for the first time, being seriously called into question. Deep Silver and Foray used Steam like a storefront window display and then split. That's cold. But Valve isn't faultless. It's 30% on store cut surprise announcements. And anything goes Steam Direct policy have seemingly fostered the perception that Steam is a utility, a thing to be used, however, is convenient. What relationship Deep Silver has with Valve, I don't know exactly, but the bond wasn't stronger than Epic's offer. To be fair, we don't know how much money Epic is throwing at these exclusives, and we hope to find out to determine how just how much a defection costs. Right now, all it means for us is a few more decisions. Whether or not we enter our credit card information into another launcher, whether we play Metro Exodus this year or next, in the long term, though, we may remember 2019 as a turning point for PC gaming. And they're not wrong. They are not wrong. They are not wrong in any way. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Still. We shall wait and see what happens later down the road. In the meantime, let's get into the next article. Apple reportedly planning a gaming subscription service. This is on IGN. Another player enters the game streaming ring. Very interesting. Apple is reportedly planning a Netflix-like gaming subscription service that would that would allow users to access a bundle of a bundled list of games. Go away, not interested. Thank you. Can this thing load any slower? As reported by Cheddar, Apple began discussing the service with game developers in the second half of 2018 and five anonymous sources confirmed these plans. There is no further information as to what the cost will be or what types of games Apple will offer, as the service is still in the early stages of development and, alt and Apple could ultimately decide to abandon it. Additionally, Apple has discussed the possibility of becoming a publisher as well according to two of the sources, which could hint at Apple's ambition to further expand in the gaming space. The gaming service would add to Apple's offerings besides hardware that include Apple Music, original shows to rival Netflix on its own streaming service, and a planned news subscription service set to launch later this year. Apple is the next player to in a potential crowded market that reportedly will also see Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and Verizon, all creating their own game streaming services. Apple would certainly have the hardware necessary to support this, his, this endeavor, as the newest iPad Pro is, according to Apple, as powerful as an Xbox One S. Good grief. Now that is very interesting.
So we've got, so our next article of the day is uh, Insomniac Games teasing a Spider-Man sequel. They're teasing, it's already in the works. Last year we were, we were witness to the complete annihilation of half of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's population. One of the victims, surprisingly, was the friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man, and the audiences around the world were shell-shocked. He wasn't gone for long, however, because later in the year, Marvel and Sony released the smash hits Marvel Spider-Man exclusively on the PlayStation 4 console, upsetting many Xbox, Xbox loyal Xbox players. The good news is, fans don't have to hold their breath, breath that much longer on the sequel, because it may already be on the way. Take a look at... So, Brian Intihar, this is what he had. Few things are more nerve-wracking than sharing your first story draft to others. Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. That group. Could the director be teasing the fans that the follow-up video game is well on its way? Sure, the post was vague but and did not say exactly what game this first story draft was for, but it's hard to imagine he'd be prioritizing anything else over a home-run franchise like Spider-Man. If the game is not completely in development, we can at least hope a sequel is in conception. Based on the ending of the game, which we will discuss for spoiler purposes, you can make sure of assumptions of who will be involved and where the story is going. And just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold up my end of the bargain on that one. I'm not gonna spoil anything. No. So here we go. Nintendo reboots Metroid Prime 4 and taps Retro Studios to restart the project. Hmm, interesting. Nintendo has delayed Metroid Prime 4. Nintendo is rebooting the project and shifting development to Retro Studios. The Metroid Prime series is the original developer, according to a statement from Shinya Takahashi, the senior managing executive officer at Nintendo. The current development progress has not reached the standards we seek in a sequel to the Metroid Prime series, Takahashi said in a development update video posted to YouTube. Nintendo always strives for the highest quality in our games, and in the development phase, we challenge ourselves to confront whether the game is living up to, to that quality on a daily basis. According to Takahashi, Metroid Prime 4 was not meeting that standard. They have decided to re-examine the development structure itself and change it. Takahashi said specifically, we have asked producer Kensuke Tanabe to work in trust and collab work in trust and collaboration with the studio that developed the original Metroid Prime series Retro Studios in the United States and restart development from the beginning. By collaborating and developing with Retro Studios, we believe we can make this game something that will meet our fans' expectations. Very interesting. Very interesting that they're restarting. Very interesting that they're restarting development on Metroid Prime 4. Now, this is going to be interesting. We had Castlevania as a Netflix series, and now according to IGN last week, Resident Evil Netflix TV series reportedly in the works. I have said it once, and I will say it again. Can you load the article any slower? Netflix is reportedly developing a live-action Resident Evil series, according to Deadline. The streaming service declined to comment on the report, which says the project is in the early stages of development per Deadline. 
The plan is for the series to expand the Resident Evil universe and deepen the existing mythology. I fear the series will keep the basic premise, which also served as the setup for the movie franchise. The drama series will explore the dark inner workings of Umbrella Corporation and the new world order caused by the outbreak of the T-Virus. Very interesting. Here we go, every IGN Resident Evil review. Resident Evil 1, 8.7. GameCube Remake, 8, 9. Uh, uh, Resident Evil Archives. Resident Evil 2, 9.3. The remake got a 9. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, 9.4. My goodness me, they, they reviewed it on every single platform. Code Veronica, 9.2. Code Veronica X. Resident Evil Survivor at 4, Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 0, 8.2, Dead Aim 6.9, Outbreak 7.6, Outbreak File number 2, 6.5, Resident Evil 4, 9.8, almost got a 10! Missions 8.5, Umbrella Chronicles 7.9, Genesis 7.3, Resident Evil 5 got 9, despite that, despite Chris Redfield and his big blasted arms punching boulders in the mouth of an active volcano! Desperate Escape 7, Dark Side Chronicles 8.1, Mercenary Versus 6, Mercenary Series. Revelations 8.5, Operation Raccoon City at 4, Resident Evil 6, 7.9, Revelations 3, Revelations 2, Episode 1, 7, 8, 7.5, 6.8, The Fool series, Resident Evil Revelations 2, 7, Umbrella Corps 3.8, Resident Evil 7, 7.7, 7? really? I'm very, very disappointed with that. Disappointed and surprised. Now news on Overwatch now. We have got a brand new map. The Bl Blizzard has announced a new map for Overwatch and is now live on the PC test servers called Paris. The new map takes place in the French city. Paris is a new assault map and contains many narrow streets and corridors. Despite taking place in the City of Love, the new map looks as if it's structured to funnel players into fierce firefights as they battle it out for capture points. Announced noticeable landmarks on the Paris map include the Cabaret Luna, the, Patis the Patisserie Galande, and Maison Marat palace in the center of the city. Where's the Eiffel Tower? Where's the Notre Dame Cathedral? Where's the Arc de Triomphe? Where's Champs-Élysées? Where are all of these? Overwatch's latest event, the annual Lunar New Year celebration, is still live across all systems. Modeled after Chinese culture, each celebration adds new content to Overwatch that makes reference to the country's historical and cultural figures. This year, titled this year's event, titled Year of the Pig, will continue until February eighth. Year of the Pig, the Year of the Pig event, largely pays homage to Chinese generals and famous figures during the Han Dynasty, especially with all its neat skins. For example, Reaper, Hanzo, Reinhardt, Torbjor, Zenyatta, and Tracer have new Labu, Huangzong, Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, Zhu Liang, and Hong Gildong skins respectively. Oriza has also has a new epic Sanye skin and Bridget has new a new epic general skin. Past Overwatch Lunar New Year event skins are available again 
2. Now we've got two more articles to go through today. One of them regarding uh, Pokemon Go. It's going to be short and sweet. But here we go. Pokemon Go has uh, been updated to introduce several new Pokemon from the Sinnoh region, which debuted in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. These primarily include evolutions requiring a special item to access. The Pokemon cited in the update include Licky Licky and Tangrowth, which evolved from Licky Tongue and Tangela, respectively. The players must have Sinnoh stones in order to evolve the Kanto region Pokemon into their Sinnoh counterparts, and those aren't easy to come by. Additional evolutions hint, as hinted by attached art heralding the update, as seen, are Abipom, Gallade, and Yanmega, which came from Apom, Krillia, and Yanma. There are, there are also Pokemon that won't require the rare Sinnoh stones to capture. However, Kranidos and Shieldon, among others, can be found in the wild as of today's version update. Niantic also hints at the inclusion of new Pokemon from the region in Pokemon Eggs. But for competitors, not just collectors, raid battles are seeing a tweak too. You may notice that Pokemon that appear in raid battles are more powerful and sturdy when you challenge them. Reads the official update. Plus, some moves that certain Pokemon know may be stronger or weaker when used in battle. And we've got a new raid. So here we go. It's Palkia, which is the latest in the legendary raids. And last but by no means least, an article regarding Kingdom Hearts 3. Relax, I am not going to spoil the game. I am not going to spoil the game. Because I'm not that sort of person. This was written January 24th last week. So here we go. Even when it, uh, so I'm, I'm reading this at time of right at when I'm reading this as if, right, anyway, here we go. even when it, even when it, uh, so, so it launched, so Kingdom Hearts 3 launched on January 29th, just a few days ago, but it won't have, but it won't have, but it didn't have all its content available to check out. Square Enix didn't give access to the game's epilogue until January 30th and didn't allow them to didn't allow players to unlock a secret movie, which is a serious tradition at this point, before January 31st. But gaining access to the latter post release edition, the secret movie, will take a bit of work on the part of players. Unlike the epilogue, which can be viewed upon finishing the game's main storyline, the secret movie unlocks after players complete an additional set of requirements. So you may want to take notes, players, if you want to uh, have a crack at getting the secret movie on your first go. In an interview with Famistu, Famitsu, director Tetsuya Nomura, Nomura gave a few more specifics as to what those requirements are. The secret movie is only accessible after photographing a number of lucky emblems, which are Mickey Mouse-shaped Easter eggs scattered throughout the game. They do scat. They do have the Mickey Mouse logo. You know the um, two. You know the two circle, two small circles for the ears, and the big dot for the face. Yeah, those. They've been in a few Disney films previously. Sometimes Donald and Goofy will prompt the player who controls Happy Go Lucky Hero Sora 
to stop and take a picture of a lucky emblem somewhere in the area. But for most of the game, finding them and snapping a photo is on the player alone. The number of lucky emblems... The, num the number of lucky emblems needed to see the secret movie, which will also be viewable upon the completion of the game, is not yet clear. Alright. Nomura told Famis Famitsu that the harder the difficulty setting, the fewer the emblems players will have to seek out. But even standard isn't that strict, I think, he said according to K Kotaku's translation. However, playing on the easy setting will mean the secret movie won't unlock until every last lucky emblem is captured to save Sora's gummy phone. The game's version of a smartphone. Well, every last lucky emblem is captured and saved to Samora's gummy phone. And that's not the easiest task in our experience. The lucky emblems are very well hidden throughout the background of every world. For fans who want to get... Uh, for fans who want to get every last drop out of Kingdom Hearts possible, they'll get ready to take a lot of pics. Until then, enjoy the game. So there we are. That's all the uh, news taken care of. Now, it's on to Xbox versus PlayStation for February 2019. Now, as Microsoft won in January, they get the advantage of going first. So, the Xbox One titles for February are Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Jump into retro-style gaming with Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. With the involvement of legendary Koji Igarashi, Koji, Ig Koji Igarashi, this action adventure title harkens back to some of the classic side scrolling games of the past. Switch your play among several different characters, each with their own unique ability, as you travel perilous lands to defeat the evil demon lurking in the Forbidden Castle. It feels like Castlevania. Super Bomberman R as well next. Step into the fun. Step into the fun because Super Bomberman R is back and better than ever. Eight Bomberman heroes journey to space to fight the evil Emperor Bugler. But now with the help of the <laughs> But now with the help of the Master Chief, exclusive to the Xbox One version. Oh yes! Use your state-of-the-art combat armor to help win the day. Play alone or with a friend because this is the biggest Bomberman game ever. <laughs> Master Chief and Bomberman as a baller. And for Xbox 360, Assassin's Creed Rogue. Continue the adventures of your ancestors in Assassin's Creed Rogue. Set in the chaotic moments of the French and Indian War, relive the days of Shea Patrick Cormac, a fearless young outcast assassin who slowly morphs into a deadly assassin hunter due to tragedy. tragedy. The dark transformation your character goes through will shape the future of the Brotherhood forever. And it's an original Xbox game next, and it's Star Wars Jedi Academy. Star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. Learn the ways of the Force from Jedi Master Luke Skywalker in Star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, in this classic title from the original Xbox. Begin your journey as a student eager to learn as you interact with famous Star Wars characters and location. In the end, you'll face the ultimate choice. The good and freedom of the light, or the tantalizing power of the dark side. Hang on a second, folks. The games on offer for PlayStation for February 2019 are For Honor and the first season of Hitman. Gunhouse and Rogue Aces are also on the current gen console as well as V. As well as the Vita, thanks to Crossbuy. Meanwhile, PlayStation 3 getting a big name. I mean, wow, how's about that? Nice big name to finish off their span of free games. Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. 
Die Kick is also on the docket for Leeds Machine and Vita as well. And again, that is this is the last month of games on offer for uh, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. So, with that in mind, I mean, For Honor, Hitman, Metal Gear Solid 4, three big games compared to Assassin's Creed Rogue, um, and Star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. This month goes to PlayStation, so we're one each. So, here we go. We have got a massive 42 trophies to go through. And I'm going to go through the secret trophies first. 42 trophies. One thing, ladies and gentlemen. Points and trophies. Trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies. Trophy achievement hunting. Resident Evil 2 Remake. Sold 3 million copies worldwide in the space of a... In the space of its first week, which I'm very, which is good business for Capcom. I mean, you've got to remake Resident Evil 3 Nemesis now. Stars. That still creeps me out to this day. But anyway, so here we go. The secret trophies are as follows. We've, um, we're going to go through the bronze trophies first. Young Escape. Escape the bedroom within 60 seconds during Sherry's segment. With time spare, complete stage 4G with four plus minutes left until detonation. Welcome to the city of the dead. Make it to the police station. Path to the goddess. Solve the goddess statue puzzle. One slick super spa. Using only the EMF visualizer to complete Ada's gameplay segment. Never ending rain. Escape the police station. In the blink of an eye, defeat Super Tyrant with five plus minutes with five minutes left until detonation. Hide and seek. Complete Sherry's segment. Hack complete. Complete Ada's segment. Grim Reaper. Complete the fourth survivor extra mode. A great need for a shower. Escape from the sewers. Two silver trophies, huh? Two silver, two silver trophies are gotcha. Complete stage 2G using the crane only once. And Broken Umbrella witnessed the true ending. And you've got two secret gold trophies. Sizzling Scarlet Hero. Complete Claire's story on standard or hardcore mode with an S rank. Leon S. Ken Leon S. Kennedy. Complete Leon's story on standard or hardcore with an S rank. And the rest are regular trophies. So, here we go. The regular trophies are as follows. Starting with the bronze trophies. Zombie Roundup. Kill three enemies at once with a sub-weapon. Vermin Extermination. Destroy a Mr. Raccoon. Treasure Hunter. Using the photo hints and find two items. Two hidden items. Basics of survival. Combine two items together. That'll hold them. Use wooden boards to board up a window. Mm, yeah, that won't hold for long. Lore Explorer. Read all the files. Like skeet shooting, shoot a zombie dog or liquor out of the air. Keep their heads ringing. Paralyze the liquor's sense of hearing. Li hip to add squares. Increase your inventory slots. Hats off, shoot tyrant's hat off his head. First break in, open a dial safe. Eat this! Counterattack with a sub weapon. Don't need no stinking gun. Defeat an enemy with a knife. Customizer, customize a weapon. Bon appetit! Shoot the grenade you fed to an enemy. Oh my word, that is brilliant. A waste of space. Expand inventory slots to the max. A vault-like mind. Open a portable safe. Now on to the silver trophies. Minimalist. Clear the game without opening the item box. 
Master of Unlocking. Oh, come on! Come on! <laughs> Must! <laughs> oh, my word. Take this with you. It might be handy if you, the Master of Unlocking, take it with you! <laughs> that is brilliant! That is absolutely brilliant! That is brilliant! Oh dear. Master of Unlocking, open all of the safes and locks in the game. Frugalist, complete the game without using a recovery item. Ooh. Complete vermin extermination. Destroy all, Mr. Raccoons. A small carbon footprint. Take 14,000 steps or fewer in one playthrough. A heroine emerges. Complete Claire's story. A hero emerges. Complete Leon's story. And you've got two gold trophies. Complete Claire's story on hardcore game mode. Hardcore rookie. Uh, hardcore college student for that, for that one. And hardcore rookie is complete Leon's story on hardcore game mode. And complete all those. And you get the Elusive Platinum Trophy!